In this video, I'm gonna tell you about 10 mistakes you should avoid when using your Hover Air X1 drone. Now this is going to be particularly of interest to newcomers and first time users of this little selfie drone. Now first, a lot of these mistakes mainly apply to this very first version of the Hover Air X1 and not to these new Pro versions which address a lot of the shortfalls of this cheaper version. Number one, do not try and fly the Hover Air X1 over water or any other reflective surface. Now this includes snow as well. There's even a warning that pops up when using manual mode. Now flying over a reflective surface will confuse the height sensor and the aircraft is either likely not to respond to your control, which is pretty scary, or worse, it's going to take an unattended drink in the water. Now this limitation, as I said, is only for this very first version of the drone rather than the new Pro versions which can cope with flying over water. Number two, so the next mistake is trying to fly the drone over a high drop such as a cliff or off the top of a large building. Now the Hover Air X1, this first version, has a height limit of 50 meters, so if the drop to the ground is higher than this limit, then the drop, then the drop, then the drone is simply going to lower itself down until it reaches this limit. Now of course, it might not be too bad in reality, but if you're on the 80th floor when that happens, you're gonna to wanna to get down to the bottom pretty quick before the battery runs out of juice. Number three, so this brings us to the next mistake, which is not remembering that the Hover Air X1 only has about 10 minutes or so of juice in the battery. So don't get too excited and start off your manual mode adventures and send it off too far when the battery is very low. If it is low on the battery, it's going to issue a warning and then it's going to descend and start the landing procedure automatically. So you want to make sure that it's going to land in a safe place and it's not gonna be difficult to retrieve. Number four, the next mistake is not checking the distance you've chosen when doing an automated maneuver, such as an orbit or a backwards drony, for example. Now, on a recent holiday, I stood a just a few meters from a cliff edge and I decided to do an orbit move but I then didn't check the parameter I'd set the last time, which is probably around about 15 meters or so. And I launched a hover and off it went dutifully doing an orbit right on the edge of a cliff. Now fortunately it did actually complete the orbit, but not before I almost panicked and fainted. Now I suggest that when you're arriving at a new location, take a deep breath and look around the environment and don't launch the hover until you've double checked the parameters of the automated move in the settings and also checked the distance to hazards like a cliff edge. And I also suggest setting the hover on the minimum distance setting first, seeing where it goes and then only increasing the distance when you're confident. Number five, the next potential mistake is not checking the automated mode you've selected before pressing the launch button. Now I actually find it's not easy to remember which automated mode relates to which symbol on the top of the hover. Now sometimes I think I've selected the automated mode I want, but I end up accidentally pressing the mode button instead of the launch button if I'm not careful. Now what happens is the hover gladly goes off and does its mode and it's not always the one I wanted. Now once again on holiday, it very nearly crashed into rock when I thought it was in orbit mode, and it said it was decided to do a backwards drone instead, narrowly missing a rock. Number six, next remember the drone has no obstacle avoidance sensors at all, nothing at all, nothing on the front, back or side, or anything like that. So if it's tracking you from behind and there are obstacles like branches, it's gonna happily crash into them if given half the chance. So make sure there's adequate clearance or set the height of the follow to low or medium depending on the height of the branches. Again, be careful navigating through rocks and other such heavy obstacles. But when I took it on a trip and navigated through some rocks myself, due to the hollow hover's follow algorithms, it did a pretty good job of following me without any accidents. Number seven, make sure that you set an appropriate height and distance when doing a follow shot. Now, on a few occasions, I've actually set the follow height to low and close and then found most of the footage consisted of a fairly close shot of my butt walking around, which nobody wants to see. So be mindful of this and then set it to a more appropriate setting. So I suggest maybe medium or far rather than close distance and then medium or high for the height setting. And that gives the best shot in my opinion. Number eight, be very mindful of the wind. So this drone has a level three wind resistance. So it's capable of handling a, probably a quite a light breeze. 
So the higher the drone is in height in the sky, the stronger the wind. So when doing shots like the rocket drone, where the rock drone goes up some way, the wind's either gonna cause the drone to go off course or wander away and have more trouble performing its shots. So it may be better to keep the automated shots like orbit and follow to a low level if you've got some strong wind. Now also be careful in large open spaces near to cliff edges, etc. Now the wind can really pick up near a cliff edge and you don't want to do an orbit shot and then you'll find your drone has difficulty fighting the wind to return to you. Now the next two tips you might consider are particularly stupid mistakes, but I wanted to include them anyway because I've actually done them once and, and when I really wasn't concentrating on what I was doing. Okay, number nine, if you're flying the drone in manual mode, make sure that the mobile phone is in close range of the drone. So the app on the phone communicates with the drone via a Wi-Fi signal. So you might be wondering what the problem could be. Well, if you're flying this drone with a special controller like this, then you might want to put your drone down somewhere to free your hands to be able to use the controller. And you might then wander away from the phone from some distance, and then you could lose the Wi-Fi signal. Or on my phone in particular, if the phone goes to sleep or gets locked, then the Wi-Fi signal can get interrupted, causing the drone to lose connection and do rather random things. Number 10, this brings me onto a rather related daft mistake. Again, when flying this manual mode and using the controller, the controller communicates with the phone in Bluetooth, and then the phone then controls the drone via Wi-Fi. Again, like the previous mistake, make sure that the phone is in the Bluetooth range of the controller. Now, while the phone might be close to the drone itself, the maximum Bluetooth range is five meters. So make sure that you keep within that distance of the phone itself and don't wander too far away. Otherwise, you'll find the Bluetooth connection will drop and you could lose control of the drone. Okay, well, that's 10 mistakes to avoid when using the Hover Air X1. Now, hopefully you're not gonna make these mistakes as you're gonna be much more clever than me, but I just wanted to make sure that no one else falls for these mistakes like I did. Okay guys, I hope you find that video useful. If you do, of course, please give the video a big thumbs up to help support the channel. And also I can ask you to hit that subscribe button like everyone else does, because it really does help the channel grow and produce more videos like this. Take care and I shall see you soon.